Okay, today I'd like to make a video <clears throat> dedicated just to uh, bell siphons, drains, and tuning the system. Um, let's see. There are a couple of uh, problems that can crop up <clears throat> because of the way I made the, the drain here on the bottom. Instead of the fish tank being straight below and <clears throat> the water coming straight down, it goes through this drain and then through two elbows into the fish tank. If you have your fish tank straight under your, your grow beds, then you <clears throat> shouldn't come across these issues. Um, the first issue is this the pipe here if the pipe is raised uh, backwards where the outlet is higher than the, the elbow here beneath the, the straight pipe what will happen is you'll get the fill cycle on the grow bed <clears throat> where it will drain, the siphon will go to break and then it'll fill up a little more and then it'll the siphon will start again. I've seen this when you have what I call a negative rise to run and or if you install a trap here. Okay, I uh, when I was testing, <clears throat> I installed a trap and I thought it would be a good idea to have a trap to clean out any hydrogen that got stuck in the system. But what ended up happening was not only did I have that half fill grow bed or uh, half fill fall siphon cycle going on but <clears throat> I also noticed that y you had to uh, the grow bed would fill up with a lot more water because it had to push the water the slug of water that sits in the bottom of the trap and the same thing will occur too with a negative rise to run because you'll you'll have water sitting here in the pipe if this is angled upwards. So in both situations there, you can cause the false siphon, what I call the false siphon break. And that is, it'll appear to have broken, and then it'll come up a little ways, and then drain, and then up, and it'll never reach your full height again. <clears throat> the other issue is a constant run. Um, siphon and that's where you can see that other drain over there that's where the siphon doesn't break it just keeps draining and draining and draining and draining and draining and sucking and draining and sucking and draining and your water level stays right there see it just kind of cramped for space here but see how the water level is just sitting right there and you end up where the siphon never breaks. It just drains and drains and drains and drains. And you'll get a gurgle now and then. <clears throat> that is caused by a, n a number of issues. And I'd like to uh, go into those. But first, let's look at this one that's going to drain successfully to find out what to look for here. This one's draining. <clears throat> it's in full siphon right now. You can hear a couple of gurgles coming out of the bell. And I want to point out, right here, the, there'll be a large gulp. And then, right there, that was the large gulp, with the large gulp of air. And then <clears throat> the siphon is broken completely. That large gulp is what I'm calling the sweet spot of rise to run. I found that the drain, the horizontal drain pipe, when you put a level on these, typically in, in plumbing you need, for a certain set diameter pipe, you need a certain rise to run. That is an uh, inch of drop over a certain amount of span. Okay, but what I found with these siphons is <clears throat> the rise to run needs to be nearly horizontal uh, with the, the drain end being slightly lower than the tailpiece end. Um, it has helped me to use these 
uh, ceiling hangers with 3 8 threaded rod and a uh, pipe hanger because when you measure from the bottom of the pipe to the level of your the piece that you're sitting on here, um, you put a thread rod in there and then <clears throat> you, when you assemble this, you can adjust it so that the, the, thing, the horizontal pipe will raise and lower slightly. Um, and then you can find that sweet spot. <clears throat> but when you're, when you're draining and you come to that level where the bell siphon is starting to suck air from the top, um, you just put your hand on the bottom of this when your, your rise to run is downward and just lift it up until you hear that gulp of air and that's your sweet spot. Measure, I measured from there and then you're all set. <clears throat> now, back to the constant run troubleshooting where the siphon never breaks and it just sits there with a couple of inches. The first thing uh, in that situation to check for is how your grow bed is filling. If you've got it on full tilt and you're filling the grow bed too fast, the siphon won't break because the grow bed's being filled quicker than air can suck in through the bell to break the siphon. So you'll you'll sit at this, this strange uh, empty equilibrium um, <clears throat> the best way that I've found to, uh, to fill your tanks is to bring your, your, your inflow, your inlets, to equilibrium with the standpipe, okay, without the, without the bell on there, so that you have the same amount of flow going in as you do going out. You, <clears throat> you put the bell on... And then what I did was I would increase the flow and then count 30 seconds. If no siphon uh, activated, I would slightly increase the flow on the ball valve and then uh, count 30 seconds again and, and so on. You just repeat until you, uh, your siphon goes on. But you want to make sure you, you count that 30 seconds. You want to give time for your grow bed. If you have a larger grow bed, you probably want to maybe even count up to a minute until the siphon kicks on. Once the siphon kicks on, then you know you're at your minimum inflow uh, to create a siphon. Now, the uh, back to the constant flow, once you're, you, once you're at that point with the inflow, you know that you can't be overfilling your grow bed, um, so that's not your issue. And if you have found the so-called sweet spot on your, on your horizontal pipe, you know that's not the issue. So, <clears throat> that only leaves one thing, and that's the bell itself. If you, uh, if I pull this bell out, I have inside here, I have a half inch diameter, half inch PVC uh, pressure, the... Uh, PVC pipe and I have a bell here that is one and a half inch diameter PVC with a one and a half inch diameter cap it's a, a flat cap it's not uh, a domed one the um, the holes at the bottom are simply a Forstner bit drilled uh, one, uh, one inch diameter and then about uh, one <clears throat> one centimeter or ten millimeters above that, I have a three sixteenths air hole, and I've experimented with creating more air holes around the side just to see if that had any effect. It really didn't uh, have any effect. When you break the siphon, you break the siphon, and what I found with the horizontal pipe is that gulp, the air is being pulled up through the bottom of the of the tailpipe. It, it's that that's required, not so much this. This is what causes the initial gurgling. And I guess I'm going to have to go to part two uh, here to talk more about this. So stand by for that.